Hi, everybody. Uh, in this video, I would like to discuss the proof of concept on blockchain and how to build the proof of concept. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay, hope you can see my screen. Um, great. So, how do we build the blockchain proof of concept? And first of all, let's discuss why you want to build the, the anything on blockchain or install a blockchain into your existing uh, uh, software infrastructure and the economical ecosystem. So first of all, it could be because you want to speed up the business processes and how they get executed. Secondly, you eliminate expensive intermediaries that could be otherwise automated with the blockchain and smart contracts. Um, you want to ensure data immutability and, and therefore data consistency. Once the data is written out there, it's, it cannot be changed and it will stay there forever. So uh, that means fault tolerance and unstoppable applications, unstoppable data. Uh, then you might want to facilitate trust between the parties within the economical ecosystem. And finally, uh, you want to raise millions of in contributions throughout the ICO and you think it's it's just a great idea to append the word blockchain to uh, to, to your uh, um, product page um, yeah that's how it is I'm, I'm not saying it's good or bad it's just how it is and contributors would, would be able to judge by themselves if, if it makes sense to to use blockchain in, in a specific um, um, scenario or not all right, so what steps uh, do we usually take? Well, first of all, we, we identify the roles and motivations uh, within the economical ecosystem. Then we outline the components that are out there and that have to be added for the blockchain implementation. Uh, then we take care of the high priority use case, after which, after the implementation, we, we validate the proof of concept uh, to assess what to do next. Um, so roles and motivations. Usually, it's it's a map with uh, with the identified entities, the roles within uh, the economical ecosystem, and we lay out what what are their fears, what are their incentives, what they want to achieve, what, and we draw some connections between them. It helps understand the economical ecosystem and incentives because. Uh, basically, a lot of uh, blockchain engineering is uh, related with the game theory. Um, which implies this uh, understanding of the of the incentives. Um, then we lay out the components. So what does the system look like right now? And what has to be added to the system? Uh, usually in terms of blockchain, so we, we implement the blockchain itself. It could be the, uh, say, Ethereum private deployment, or it could be a series or set of smart contracts on testnet or mainnet uh, of Ethereum. And usually there is a kind of the SDK or API gateway uh, that would enable the, the simple communication between the existing components of your system and the blockchain. Um, so some components of your system and some roles would like to definitely talk through the APIs or SDKs, which are again, the centralized apps. So other roles might not trust uh, your uh, your SDK and might want to uh, validate and check the transactions on the blockchain itself so they would have the direct connection uh, to the blockchain. Uh, after that, we, we, we sit and think, OK, what is the, the highest priority use case? There is usually a bunch of them um, related to transaction facilitations, to data storage, uh, to to changes in in the whole transparency in the system, etc. But we we sit and think, what from the budget perspective makes the most sense? So the highest priority feature that will be the easy easiest to implement, and we um, lay out such an interaction flow, which is the end to end interaction um, on a highly te technical and you know atomized level. Um, giving all the parties of the proof of concept uh, the clear vision who has to do what and what interaction or interface they have to implement. Um, and after that, we run the validation. So basically, we, we drive adoption. And by adoption, we mean either the usage of the proof of concept is um, at the 
at actually at the stage where it is usable or mental acceptance, like people within your organization or within your economical ecosystem uh, start to, to talk about your proof of concept project and they start saying, hey, when this thing is going to be totally live, then we are going to do it this way. And you see that, you know, that people have mentally accepted this uh, uh, blockchain component of your in your ecosystem. Uh, we measure improvements, uh, so we could um, uh, do this in a uh, either quantitative or qualitative way. Uh, depends, and we do the presentations to decision makers, and uh, we usually discuss with decision makers how to move forward, what to change, etc. I have to say that proof of concept usually differs from the fully fledged implementation. Uh, whereas proof of concept could be made on a very simplified uh, blockchain deployment uh, uh, compared to the fully fledged implementation. Uh, proof of concept might uh, have way, way, way lighter uh, approach in terms of uh, uh, security testing, uh, overall testing, uh, edge cases, etc. But um, that's something to, you know, to, to basically put your your foot in the door into the blockchain world um and after that you can easily uh, design a, a, a fully fleshed blockchain implementation plan your budget plan the roadmap um etc so i hope it was helpful um and uh, i'm looking forward to basically uh talking to you very soon uh you have a great day and i wish you successful blockchain proof of concepts Bye.